you mentioned um, how the strategy going forward, but let's take it threefold. Where we stand, where we're coming from when you mentioned you refreshed it to something that you could package and have each Ugandan have an ability to go out and enjoy what Uganda has to offer. But also after this, what's the plan? Where do we stand as a country? So let's go back to before 2022. How was it looking like for a Ugandan who wanted to visit and explore Uganda? Did we have many Ugandans? How so far has the campaign gone and how, where do we plan on taking it? Um, thank you. Our, we have come a long way, especially with, uh, with domestic tourism. Before 2022, um, we had a very low number of domestic tourists. It was more because Ugandans were not aware of what we had. Because from Uganda Tourism Board, we actually ran some surveys uh, from 2019 to find out why aren't Ugandans traveling. Uh, three things we found out. Mm -hmm. One was they were not aware. Even for those who could afford to travel every weekend, did not know that we had all this variety and the beauty and even in terms of infrastructure, they were not aware that actually we had beautiful lodges across the country. Two, um, there was a concern about accessibility. Yeah? And this is because there was a perception tourism is all, all about going to the national parks. Yeah, So there was always the complaint or the concern that it's difficult how you know, I have a little Corona car. Mm -hmm. How do I actually make it cheap for myself or affordable to reach Bwindi? You know, or Massachusetts Falls or Kidepo is so far away. My car can't make it. I need a four-wheel drive. So accessibility was cited as one of the key factors that was stopping the Ugandans from traveling. And then three was the cost. Again, it was a question of perception because the Ugandans were thinking, well, you have to pay in U.S. dollars, you know, um, gorilla permits is $700, but that is for internationals. Ugandans pay 250,000 Ugandan shillings. They're actually charging shillings. Entrance to the national parks is, uh, is, uh, is 20,000. For Ugandans, meanwhile, the internationals are charged up to $40. So there was an issue, like I said, awareness and then perception. And there we started running a campaign called Take on the Pal. And uh, we got interrupted, of course, with COVID. And uh, once we went through, after the first lockdown, we started this campaign, Take on the Pearl, and because people had been locked inside for a long time as well, we could see that people now wanted to travel. Because they couldn't travel out of the country, it was an opportunity for them now to explore their own country. And ever since, uh, from 2020 to the point where we launched the new brand Explore Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, we're seeing the numbers just growing. Okay. The numbers are growing, whereby the numbers of Ugandans visiting the national parks have surpassed the international tourist numbers. I think as Ugandans, this is say, well done. <laughs> and also to you as a board, definitely show something is working. <laughs> 